Hey everyone, this is Jim and Joelle of From Scratch Farmstead. And behind us here is our Aga oven. And we've had it for just a little over a year now. And today we're gonna kind of walk you through the oven itself, give you an overview of it, and also talk about some of the pros and cons of using it for our family over the past year. So I had heard of Aga ovens or two before we ended up getting one and I think I came across it online somehow and I was doing some reading into them because I thought they were awesome looking and I wanted to see how they worked and so I had kind of researched them a little bit so when we purchased our home here and knew that we would be doing a complete renovation on our kitchen I kind of casually mentioned to Jim that there's this thing called an aga oven and if we could maybe find one it would be like my dream oven and I was totally thinking like this is would never happen but I'm gonna throw it out there because we pretty much decorated our entire home cabinets I mean everything that we got was used on Facebook marketplace or thrifted somehow and so I just threw that out there and so I kind of gave him the challenge of checking um, used sources to see if maybe it would be possible to to get one for our home um, knew these are quite expensive and well beyond our budget, but I thought maybe if we could find a used one, it would be possible. So he started looking um, on Facebook Marketplace mainly, and we were actually seeing a few come up. Um, and then we kind of were getting into more of like a crunch time. Okay, we need to figure out what we're doing for our oven. And he happened to check, and one came available about an hour away from us um, where the woman was renovating her kitchen and just looking to get rid of it for a really, really reasonable price. And so we went, we checked it out, um, and it just worked out really well. It was kind of a win-win for both of us. And to get it, we did have to hire professional movers to move it from her house to our house, and it was kind of a big ordeal. These things weigh about... 1,300 pounds. 1,300 pounds of solid <laughs> cast iron. So it's heavy and it was not easy to move but we we did move it since it, it, it's almost 60 inches wide so you kind of have to design your kitchen around it in some ways or remove some cabinets or something which is basically what we did we knew we were getting the oven and then we our built, oven was our kitchen was completely empty and this was the first thing that yeah, came in yeah and then we built around it and so just to give you a little overview of what an aga oven is um as we mentioned they're they're solid cast iron um and they're made in the UK. This is a five compartment oven. You'll see there's some, some different sizes and configurations of them. Some of them don't have kind of this section right here on it. It's just this section and then there's an extra oven compartment here. But just to walk you through what all these different compartments are. So this one, this oven runs on gas as a lot of them do. Um, but there's kind of a gas control here, and then there's a burner compartment down there that creates heat. And then there's, there's ways of, it kind of filters heat through each of the other oven, uh, four oven compartments here. And so each of these compartments runs at a separate temperature. The lower ones run at a lower temperature, and then the, uh, it gets hotter as it goes up. So this first one is the lowest temperature. This one is just for like a, a warming oven that runs from 100 to 200 degrees. Above it is the slow cook oven, and that goes from 200 to 300 degrees. And then over here is, that's your baking oven down there. It's 300 to 400, and then above that is for roasting, and that's 400 to 500 degrees. Then there's two burning plates on top. Each of those run at separate temperatures. That one's the simmer plate that's lifted up right now. That's for like cooking an egg. This one is your boiling plate, and this one runs really hot. It's like six or 700 degrees and that will boil water in no time flat. And then over here is just, um, some of them have different features on this part, but this one's just a warming tray. And it, uh, it's great for, you just pull something out of the oven, set it there, uh, it keeps things nice and warm, ready to serve at any point. It's also really great for, um, if you're like fermenting things or doing like cheese making, where you just need some constant heat for incubating something. Uh, it's really wonderful and you can just set things on top of there and it keeps it at a really consistent heat. And then uh, it has this flue pipe that vents out through the roof. So it basically just works like a, um, like a gas water heater would, where it um, just vents out any, any fumes or, or anything out through the roof. 
So we love our Aga oven, and now that we've had it for over a year, I, we can't imagine not having it. Um, it does just change how you cook um, because of its unique features, and we'll get into a little bit of that, but kind of baseline overview, we we love it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so probably the question that we get asked the most about it is, aren't your gas bills astronomical because of it being on all the time and it's constantly putting out heat and, and that. And so we thought that too. And so we were kind of bracing ourselves the first um, gas bill we got after installing it. But thankfully, oh, it really... Very pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah, it really maybe added five or ten bucks on a month, but it was really hardly anything. And then we actually noticed because it's constantly giving off heat, it makes our heat bill significantly less um, in the you know fall and winter and spring on those colder days because this thing actually warms our house a pretty significant amount. Our heater doesn't run nearly as much. And so really I think those two things kind of offset the cost, making, making it pretty negligible. So cost-wise for us, that has not been a con. It has been not too expensive of an additional cost. And then about the oven itself, I think the biggest thing about it is it's just, it's so easy to cook. If you cook a lot, like we do, you can cook multiple things at once and not have to, to worry about it. So it's quite common that I would have, you know, vegetables roasting in the roasting oven while baking something in the baking oven and having something slow cook in here. Three different temperatures all happening at once, no problem. Um, and so we love it for that. I think the biggest feature that I did not realize that I would appreciate so much is this slow cooking oven. I have something slow cooking in there almost all the time. So right now, um, it's the afternoon, I have our dinner slow cooking in there. And so after lunch, I often, we have little kids, so I often cook our food in advance and then I'll just pop it in there after lunch and it will just keep it nice and warm until dinner time and I don't think about dinner, it's just ready to go. Or at night before I go to bed, I'll pop one of our Dutch ovens in there with a roast and some vegetables. It'll cook overnight and that will be lunch the next day. So I, I almost always have something in the slow cooker either reheating or cooking for the first time and it is awesome. I, I really, really love that feature about it. Yeah. Um, another awesome pro is is just how well and how evenly it cooks things. And I don't know all the science behind it, but because it's cast iron and it radiates heat, it's not just um, applying heat like a, a typical oven does. It, it, it radiates heat. And so it cooks food really uh, evenly, really well. Everything comes out like super fancy looking and everything's crisp just right and uh, it just does an amazing job at cooking food and it, yeah. it really upped our cooking game. <laughs> that being said, um, so one thing about it with this flue is all the smells from the oven actually waft outside of our house and so you want to make sure you set a timer when you're cooking things because you're not going to smell it if it's burning um, or done. You will not you will not smell it and so if you don't set a timer I think this has only happened to us one time where like 24 hours later I found some beets <laughs> roasting in our oven and it were totally black and inedible um, but I think that only happened once um, but you want to set a timer when you're cooking it because you're not going to smell things if they burn so that's just kind of a heads up there yeah um, the another thing about it is that the oven compartment size are different than your standard oven. So they're about 13 inches wide and very deep. And so if you're used to cooking with really wide um, baking cookie sheets, um, they likely will not fit in this oven. Or if you often use something like a, um, uh, a pizza, pizza stone, stone. Yeah. yeah, that's not going to fit in here. However normal size like jelly roll baking sheets fit in here just fine nine by 13 pyrex type casserole dishes just fine we use dutch ovens a lot or cast iron pans a lot those fit in there great um so for us that has not been an issue we've pretty much everything that we've had has fit in there just fine and so that hasn't been an issue but if you are someone who cooks with really wide pans that could be a problem 
Um, another thing with that is that it, it but you just have to um, kind of get used to the cooking temperatures of things because there are no dials. You cannot set anything. And so it just takes playing around and getting to know your oven how long things are going to take to cook, kind of where in the oven you want to put them. So the ovens generally come with three um, racks in them that you can adjust between them, and there are different slots for different heights in the oven. So the higher things are, the hotter it's going to be. The lower things are, the lower they're going to be. So you can kind of play around with it like a quarter of the way up. And this oven is going to be roughly 425 um, and so on and so and same with the the burning plates as yeah. well are kind of the same they're they're you know the most heat is centralized right in the middle so if you put a pot right in the middle where it's going to be its hottest if you need to dial it back a little bit you just move it more towards the outside um, and kind of adjust as you go or you could even flip flop between the two plates to a hotter or a less hot setting yeah so Again, I don't know that that's really a pro or a con. It's just you just have to learn your oven, and every Aga oven is going to be a little different in terms of how hot it gets and how quickly things cook in your oven versus someone else. However, I do think one of the pros and the beauty of this oven is it's super forgiving. And so even because it just cooks things so well, I feel like there's just a lot of... Tolerance? Yeah, tolerance for even being, you know, like... Whether something's cooked at 325 or 350 or 375 doesn't really seem to make as big of a difference in this oven. Kind of as long as it's generally in the right area, things cook fine has been our experience. So we just haven't had issues with things burning or browning too much. I, yeah, unless you majorly stick in the wrong thing or don't set a timer and forget about it. In general, things just have cooked really, really well. Yeah, another big pro is just how durable these are and how how much they're built to last so these are like i said before they're solid cast iron they're built in the uk and they've basically been building them almost the exact same way since like the 1920s mm -hmm. and a lot of those original ones are still in use today um, and as long as you maintain them you might have to replace some parts over time a big thing is they uh, agar recommends they have to be rebuilt there's insulation inside every i think it's like 30, 40, 50 years, something like that. They have to be rebuilt and repacked with more insulation. Um, but ours is almost 30, yeah, it's from the 90s. 30 plus years old. It hasn't been, there's been almost no maintenance done on it today. Mm -hmm. It runs great for us. It's been really reliable, really consistent. And it's like an heirloom uh, appliance for your home. It's, you know, the type of thing you can hand off to your children or your grandchildren someday. Yeah, that being said, if you do need maintenance done on your AGA oven, that can be a little trickier. So there are certified AGA technicians. Um, and so where we live, we found a handful of these people that are certified um, in the area. When we had some questions, we were able to call someone up who helped us and was able to walk us through some things. That being said, depending on where you live, you may or may not easily be able to find someone who would be able to help you. Um, in general, there's just not a ton of information out there about AGA ovens on the internet or people who have a lot of experience and knowledge about them. And so it's kind of one of the maybe risks you run. But in general, like Jim said, our experience is that if you can get it set up properly and going, they really are pretty maintenance free. So it is on all the time, which in the winter is wonderful. So we often will huddle here in the winter with our books and read them, or we say we have AGA dates and we'll sit in front of the AGA sipping some tea or coffee and hang out um, just because it's lovely and it gives off a nice not burning hot, but really pleasant, warm, kind of like you're sitting in front of a fireplace or something. Um, however, it also is on in the summer. So some people turn their agas off for the summer months. We keep ours on. We kept ours on all last summer. And it, it did make our house warmer than um, it otherwise would be. It puts off heat. Doing a lot of cooking in the summer would get kind of sweaty. Um, but I wouldn't say it was anything that was not manageable or it did not deter me from having the oven. I think it just made me kind of maybe adjust our cooking a little bit to try not to have, to have big bouts of 
time, especially on really hot days where I'm spending in front of the object, because that would be kind of warm. But yeah. um, it was really only an issue when it's like 90 plus degrees outside yeah. and, and really warm. And like, honestly, it probably wasn't as big of a deal as we thought it might be. Yeah, but essentially, it's also allowed us in the spring and fall to almost not use our furnace at all. It just keeps the, the house kind of at a nice temperature in those kind of more mild times. Yeah. Yeah, so it has kind of some unique random perks. Like it's great for hanging laundry on because it's always hot. Um, you know, everyone loves to sit in front of it. And really, I think the the cool thing about it is it just becomes the centerpiece of your home. Both it because of how it looks and it's so big and it's so unique, it kind of the, becomes the focal point aesthetically, but it also just with cooking all the time and wanting to hang out here, everyone just loves to hang out by the Aga. And so it's just one of the unique features about it. Um, it just, it really becomes the centerpiece of your home. All right, so that's our review of our Aga oven. Um, and like we said, we, we love it. Um, it's pretty much become like the favorite feature of our house. It's like the control center of our house. and. Uh, we couldn't, we really couldn't imagine life yeah, without Both it. like aesthetically, I just love looking at, like it's just so fun, like it's just so pretty. Yeah, it's a lot and of fun. functionality wise, like it's so useful. Fun and functional. Yeah. There we go. Um, so yeah, so we love it. Um, and really why we love it is because it fits our lifestyle so well as homesteaders, as cooking most of our meals from scratch and spending a lot of time in the kitchen. It just suits us so well. The fact that it's always on, it's always ready to go for meals or different different things we're doing in the kitchen. It's, it's always there, it's always ready. So we love that aspect of it. Yeah, so if you cook a lot, we highly, highly, highly recommend it. Yes, definitely. Um, so yeah, we hope you've enjoyed this review. If you do have any more questions about Aga ovens, we'd love to answer them. Drop it in the comments box below. Uh, we'll, we'll also have a full review on our blog, so you can check that out there. And thanks so much for stopping by the farmstead today, and we'll see you next time.